I welcome you all on behalf of Vivekananda Samiti IIT Kanpur to the lecture Volunteer and Seva in the light of Vivekananda. A uh, brief uh, introduction about Vivekananda Samiti. Vivekananda Samiti is one of the oldest club under students Jim Khana, IIT Kanpur. Since its inception in 1967, we have been functioning relentlessly in spreading and actualizing the teachings and ideas of Swami Vivekananda, thus motivating people towards the path of human excellence. Now let me give a brief introduction of Mr. Venkatesh Murthy sir, founder of Youth for Seva. Mr. Venkatesh Murthy sir is the founder and chief mentor of Youth for Seva or foundation. After completing his B.Tech in Computer Science from KREC Suratkal, he worked with Tata uh, Research Development and Design Center for two years before moving to US. While in the US, he worked with Informix and EMC for 12 years. His commitment to betterment of society began at an early age, 14 year old. He regularly volunteered at public libraries and hospitals in United States of America. This experience taught him a lot about the ways in which people can help communities. With a will to help society, Mr. Murthy relocated to Bangalore, India in 2007 and began his search for ideas and concepts through which he could make his contribution. He started looking for volunteers in his office at Dell EMC and found that 80% of them were willing to volunteer. However, they had never engaged in volunteering activities due to lack of exposure and time. This is when Mr. Murthy, along with some enthusiastic volunteers, started the organization to provide people with a platform where they could come and show their contribution. Now I request sir to deliver the talk. Thank you so much Ankush. Uh, it's such an auspicious day today. I think coincidentally, according to the transactional calendar, today is also the birthday of Sri Ramakrishna Parvam sir. February 18th uh, was his birthday. And uh, I'm truly delighted to be at this forum. In fact, yesterday I was uh, telling one of my friends that there is a talk uh, at IIT Kanpur and students will be attending this uh, talk about volunteering Seva and Vivekananda. Then he casually mentioned that I see all these uh, youngsters only in the bars and pubs. I never knew that uh, you know they come to this kind of things also. Then I told him what you see depends on where you go. If you go only to bars and pubs, you, you think that all the youths are in bars and pubs. But having involved with uh, Youth for Seva for the last uh, 14 years, I am extremely confident and my conviction in this message of Swami Vivekananda that my faith is in the younger generation, especially he used the word modern, the modern educated youth of this country. He had immense faith. In fact, at that time when Swamiji was alive, there was no such sign of India even producing this kind of highly educated people and they becoming socially very contributing. There are no such sites, but he was a drashta, a visionary. He could see and he, he was always emphasizing that, you know, my youth will work out all my plans like lads. And uh, today, this event is a witness to what I mentioned as my own conviction is Swamiji's words. And not only that we have a large young population, you hear these phrases very often. In fact, some 25 years ago when we graduated, we never used to hear these kind of things. And today amongst the young people, you hear that I want to be a change maker. I want to pursue my passion. I want to figure out the you know, meaning of my life. And a lot of these things you are able to see in the younger generation. And there are various reasons. One of them is that uh, this generation is really lucky in the sense their responsibility towards family is very little. The student today in the IIT, for example, probably is the only child for his parent or one of the two children. Whereas if you look back two generations, you know, they used to have 14, 15 children and one income. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Now you are audible. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. When we graduate, yes, sir. Yes. we always used to think that, you know, how do I uh, buy a home for my parents or do my sister's marriage? But today's generation, a lot of them don't have that. 
In fact, when you don't have this type of responsibilities, that is when you get these existential questions as to, you know, what am I doing? Why am I doing all these things? And another reason that, you know, this generation is very lucky because we are all living in very exciting times. India as a country has a fantastic global positioning today. It commands respect in the global space. And also within the country, if you see, it is boom time. If you are an entrepreneur, whether it is business entrepreneur or you are a social entrepreneur or even spiritual, I would say. In every ashram that you go, you see so many young people. So I see tremendous hope and positivity in the current generation. That said, in my introduction, they mentioned that I used to volunteer in uh, US. While that gave me how structured volunteering can be created, it also showed me the, you know, the darker side. Because when I was in Boston, from our company, they took all the employees to volunteer. And it was in an old age home. And that was a very well-run old age home. So we did, you know, we served food for the elderly people. At the end of the trip, I asked the main person who was running this old age home, Mr. John, this is uh, such a fantastic work that you are doing. I'm just curious as to where are your parents? And he said, no, my parents are in another old age home in New York. This contradiction I found that very, there is so much of urge talked about and to do good. That is the whole of religion. See, there are two components to this quote. He says, to do good is only one half of it. But the first and foremost thing is to be good. I think in the rush of doing the century problem. And another Swamiji's message was about the importance of educating women. And uh, you know, he wrote a letter when he was in US. He wrote a letter to his friend that in US, I'm so thrilled to see that every girl is going to the school here. And whereas in my country, at the age of 10, the girl is getting married and by 16, she is already a mother. This was the letter she wrote. So when he came back to India, in one of the informal conversations, uh, someone asked, Swamiji, if we send all the girls to the school, what happens to their character, chastity? Then Swamiji said, by education, I mean that by which the character is formed that by which the character is formed. That is exactly what I mean by education. Now, today, if you see the society, both in US and uh, you know, India, we have achieved a lot in terms of the universal education. I mean, um, lots of people are going to schools, even in slums and villages, we can see that the school enrollment has gone up. But I don't think we have paid enough attention to his definition of education, his emphasis on character. So what is happening as a consequence today, if you look at uh, the teenage mothers, the problem that Swamiji talked about in India in 1900, because the girls are not going to school, they're becoming mothers at the age of 16. Today, teenage mother is a big problem in US. And if you look at the Wikipedia data, and even if this is a data from the US government itself, America has one of the highest teenage pregnancies, teenage mothers is about 57. For every thousand teenager, teenage girl, there are 57 uh, you know, mothers. Now the contradiction is that in 1900 in India, a girl at 16 became a mother because she did not go to school. But today, a girl at 16 is becoming a mother in US because she went to school. Something is missing in the education. If you are focusing entirely on the arithmetic, you know, mathematics, science, and whatever fetches you livelihood, and if you don't focus on the character, this is just one example. In fact, as the economy is progressing, we are migrating from poverty-related problems to wealth-created problems. For example, drug addiction. In fact, poverty-related problems are much easier to solve. We have models. We have examples how poverty can be overcome but no country has been able to solve the drug addiction problem. So this is where the character building is something, even as volunteers, when we go to schools, when we go to the slums, to teach anyone, 
pay equal attention to the character as much as you know pay attention to the science and maths this is another message where you can see swami ji's uh, visionary approach at that time india was in extreme poverty I mean, there are millions who are starving and this is why he said we must feel for the people we must feel for the poor and he went to the extent of saying so long as even a single dog in my country is without food my whole religion will be to feed it so that much emphasis he gave to address the basic physical needs like you know your clothing your shelter and food but he knew that that is only the first step in uh, some other place he says don't make this mistake of thinking that you know providing physical help is everything and he said that is the last of the things and a higher level of service you can provide is the intellectual service and still higher is actually the spiritual service and today if you see i think even among the educated people there is lot of emotional distress even in iits we hear about suicide cases It, the problem is not that they are not intelligent, but the emotional portion, emotional strength is very weak. And this is where Swami Ji told, even at that time, more than 120 years ago, that providing physical help is a very minimal thing, and uh, you know, that's the last of the things he said. Once that is fulfilled, we have to ensure that emotionally everyone is healthy, and intellectually they are growing, and more than anything, the spiritual awareness also. because if you don't pay attention to these things again as i mentioned we are graduating from poverty related things to the you know wealth created problems just to emphasize this one uh, in 95 when i was in uh, us they invited me to give a talk about yoga at uc berkeley and uh, at the end of the talk one of the girls uh, stood up and asked uh, mr venkatesh when there are millions of poor indians sleeping on the streets of india why are all these gurus from india coming to america teaching us yoga she was very sarcastic in the tone i told her you answered your question she said i didn't get it i said you answered your question you said millions of poor indians are sleeping on the streets that word sleeping is important they don't need yoga but the society people who have perfect bed the perfect temperature and unable to sleep those are the ones who need yoga this was like you know 20 years ago but today even in india i i hear even among the young people college students high school students that they are not able to you know sleep and there is anxiety there is depression so we must address development at all levels don't look at not only gdp the economic growth as the only parameter and swami ji was a visionary that he emphasized at all levels we need to look at development in fact when we volunteer what happens to us is that you know we feel connected there is joy in serving and we feel connected with others and that connectedness is nothing but spiritual growth when you realize that you are not in isolation you are part of a bigger thing you are part of a whole and that connectedness is one step towards the spiritual growth and that's why many times i feel that even though we coin the term youth for seva in reality it is actually seva for you because as when you are in dark at the physical level because of lack of physical comforts someone else can help you but if you are going through the emotional disturbance if you are going through the spiritual vacuum others cannot help with the light light from outside cannot help we have to grow from within and volunteering our seva gives a great platform that kind of experience for us to grow spiritually also now we use the word volunteering or seva interchangeably but do they mean the same the moment we hear the word volunteering often we think of an activity it's like you know a clean up drive or feeding the poor or teaching the illiterate or helping somebody with livelihood volunteering invariably brings in front of our eyes the picture of some activity but seva in essence is more a state of mind it is the bhav when does an activity become seva if you look at uh, the traditional indian literature there is no phrase like samaj seva what we you know use very 
frequently today, social service or samaj seva, that phrase was not there. The word seva was used for serving your teacher, guru, or serving your parents, or anyone to whom you feel a sense of gratitude. So serving seva is always with a sense of gratitude that they have given so much to me. And out of love and out of respect, I serve them back. So when we get into the community service also, that's the mindset that Seva demands. Society has given us so much with an immense sense of gratitude and respect we must serve. Never serve out of you know pity or just sympathy. And in fact, Swamiji always used to say that you must love the people you serve. When one of the American ladies, uh, she became a devotee and uh, she asked Swamiji, what can I do to you know, serve you? Swamiji says, love India. Because if you want to serve India, you must first love India. This is so important because many times even within India, I come across people who feel as if they are outsiders. They keep complaining about things. And one of my friends uh, you know, was complaining so many things about India. I asked him a simple question. Do you think India is your motherland? He said, of course it is. And I asked him, if your mother is sick, will you sit and condemn her or will you serve her? When our country is not in the right shape, when it is going through some problems, it's the responsibility of the children. And we have absolutely no right to sit and damn her, condemn her. But only thing we need to do is to serve her. So this is when Seva Bhav encompasses respect, gratitude, and love. So volunteering can become Seva if we embed all these three components into it. And also in Seva, especially Swamiji, he was again a revolutionary, I would say. Because in those days, the rituals were so prominent. And he was so bold to say that, uh, you know, throw away all the cards for the next 100 years. He said, worship the living cards. Where do you go to seek cards, he said. Don't you see God in the poor, in the illiterate, in the weak? And it was, uh, you know, a revolutionary idea at that time. Today, we have internalized this, this idea. But imagine that time when uh, the worshiping of God means you have to go to temple, you have to do puja. And this was a bold statement. But how does it translate in reality? What do we mean to see divinity in an individual? I'll just give a small example. In uh, Bangalore, there was a boy, a 10-year-old boy. And his work was to dance in front of the funeral pr processions. See, certain communities in South India, when there is a funeral procession, some people are paid to dance in front of that. So this boy was one of them. He used to get paid and he will go dancing in front of the funeral procession. But one lady spotted him. She felt this guy, this boy looks so bright. I must do something. So after the procession, she spoke to this boy and admitted him to an orphanage. In fact, uh, one of our partner NGOs run this center called Nele in Bangalore. And that boy scored 77% in 10th grade. And he went on to complete his MCOM and he's working now. Now, this lady who saw this boy sensed the seed of perfection in him. That is what is seeing divinity. Don't look at their current condition. Today, somebody may be alcoholic, someone may be a sex worker, whatever it is. Don't demean anyone. That is all because of the situation. Can you see the divinity in them? Then you look at each and everyone with respect. And also you sense that divinity means infinite potential. All of us have that seed of infinite potential. And the seva is to bring out that potential. And this is what Swamiji said. When you serve people, see the divinity. See that you are worshipping the living gods. And again, he was uh, insisting on feeling for others. Because today, especially a lot of times, we think you know, problem solving is the only thing. First, you must feel for others, he said. So when you volunteer, feel connected with the people that you are volunteering for. Connected with the people and feel their pain points. What are their struggles? What are their pain points? 
the moment you feel connected you understand their sufferings their pain points and that is when the seva flows out of this you know feeling itself so he he was uh, you know downgrading the intellect he said intellect can go only so far but it's the feeling which ultimately empowers you which propels you to do something for the society when we want to volunteer when we want to do seva often we think can i do just sitting in the you know office room can i do everything online can i just run a campaign on change dot org or some platform to signature campaigns can i do just that today we are all getting used to sitting in the comfort zone and swami ji said that twin ideals of this country are tyaga and seva now tyaga here does not necessarily mean uh, you know renunciation that giving up everything tyaga is to let go your comforts for the sake of others it can be the family do i think of the happiness of others and let go some of my own comforts or it can be in the workplace anywhere there has to be an element of tyaga if your seva has to go some distance in fact uh, during covid second wave especially it was so evident the second wave was very severe and we were running isolation centers uh, with partner ngos some of the volunteers who were feeling you know very insecure they never came out of home they did they not uh, answering the call center that is one way of volunteering but few of the volunteers who never cared about you know their own safety they volunteered with the patients in isolation centers there were volunteers who worked in crematoriums and those are the people who exhibited this element of tyaga because tyaga is not caring too much about yourself when others are in more need let go your own comfort and this is an important thing because today more and more people are getting used to technology that can i do everything online i think uh, some element of going out of comfort zone is extremely important if your seva has to be very meaningful and the logo for ram krishna mission what he coined it was his own original statement he said atmano mokshartham jagat hitaya cha he said you have to do good to the world jagat hita you have to do good to the world at the same time it should lead to your own salvation and what is the path for salvation it's a purity of mind chitta shuddhi right when your mind is pure that is where we can go towards moksha or liberation i think liberation is a better word than salvation why this point is so important today today as i mentioned there is a rush to do good things and there are lakhs of ngos working in this space but often ngos also have become very corrupt they have compromised on the values ethics especially when they have to get the government grants there is a request from the government no or a demand from the government that you give kickback you give commission and this is where many ngos falter they get into the slippery path so even in uh, even though you are doing good to the world you may give 15% commission and in the 85% you may be doing lot of good to the society but you have corrupted your mind you have corrupted the organization culture and this is where swami ji said when you are helping others ensure that your purity of mind is enhanced that it is not downgraded and this first part atmano mokshartham i feel is extremely important today in any volunteering work when you run an ngo ask yourself are my activities purifying my mind am i going upwards in the purity of mind chitta shuddhi i think uh, you know this is a very subtle message sometimes i wonder how he came up with this kind of messages like atmano mokshartham jagat hitaya cha he could have just said at that time that you know jagat hita that is all what everyone should do but he said do that at the same time ensure that it is done in the right spirit and in those days if you look at the situation in the country india was a poor country it was a slave country and there was nothing to feel proud about the country at the time as i mentioned there was extreme poverty 
there was pra- there were practices like sati and the girl children were not sent to school with all these things with absolutely nothing to brag about swami ji was so confident when he went all over the world he was full of that pride that i come from this country because he was rooted not in the temporal things he was rooted in something much deeper and in those days he could say that india has a global mission today it's very easy to say because india has a prominent positioning in the landscape of the world but in 1900 imagine the state of the country we were nowhere close to freedom and yet he did not say that you know getting freedom is the mission of india he said that's going to happen but india as a nation has a mission to fulfill this kind of global mission he gave for all of us and he said giving spirituality to the world that is the mission of india rest everything is you know supportive work if you forget this mission then there is no meaning to the existence of the country and this is the mission that he gave long back and today if you look at the global situation this is the you know thing that the entire world is expecting from india just one or two gurus can conquer millions of the you know the people around the world now we have to ask the question are we ready as the educated as intelligent people i am equipped to play a meaningful role in this global mission i am rooted in the spiritual culture of this country what is my knowledge about this culture often our knowledge is very superficial it's like in the help menu in softwares there is about if you click on that it says version 5.0 author so and so copyright everything often our knowledge about our culture is at that level bhagavad gita was taught by krishna to arjun this was the context but we don't know what is in the gita so this is the time to reflect and take one step forward can i go a little deeper in understanding of our culture understanding of that spiritual heritage that we have because uh, even though we call it a great treasure a treasure is nothing if you don't know what you have it's like a beggar sitting on a box full of you know jewelry but he has never opened the box he is thinking he is poor and he is sitting and begging and that is the situation with many of the people in our country we must open the treasure and equip ourselves to play a meaningful role in this global mission today ask yourself what is the global problem that i want to solve don't worry just about india this is one thing i learned when i was in us they always teach the young people look at the world's problems america is the world leader it has to solve world's problems i think the times have changed now india has to play the role is it's no more a third world country and if you have immense wealth in the country in fact when i attended a conference of uh, un volunteers uh, the chief of un volunteers was telling that we must bring about some change in the csr law so that india should support service products in other countries and i was very happy to hear that the united nations also recognize as india not as a third world country but a country that can contribute to the rest of the world i think we as indians have to internalize this thinking that we have so much wealth today and we have so much intellectual capital and more than anything we have the human capital we have the largest you know educated young population and we all must play this role take up one mission look around the world and see what is the problem that bothers you most and take up that one idea that's what swami ji says take up one idea make that one idea your life and we are all taught in engineering you know problem solving skills that is all what is needed the rest of the things what you study in engineering is not so important all this digital signal processing or analog devices you may never use all that knowledge what you use in life is problem solving can you apply that to the society today and today's ecosystem is very fertile even if you want to become a social entrepreneur there are so many incubators the financial support system is strong today in fact youth for seva and seva international we are launching a fellowship called seva fellowship where we want to create a bunch of change makers 
who are rooted in this country, who are rooted in the culture of this country, who understand the society's DNA and play a meaningful role, role in bringing about this change. So this is the you know, message that Swamiji gave to all of us. And uh, I would like to close the talk and open up for interactions. As I mentioned, Swamiji's messages were relevant then, it's relevant now and definitely will be relevant in future. But which part is more important today, more relevant today, that is for us to take. Because society is always a dynamic entity. The situation keeps changing. And understand that, take the best of the things. And Swami Vivekananda has remained a youth icon. I think it's a divine plan that he passed away before he even turned 40. Because he, had he lived for 80 years, we were all would have carried the image of an old man. I think he has remained as a youth icon and let's walk in his footsteps and realize our own full potential and play our role in fulfilling India's mission in the global context. I sincerely thank the Samit Vivekananda Samiti at IIT Kanpur for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, now I request the moderator to open up for the interaction. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful talk. Now we'll take questions. You can raise your hand virtually in Zoom or we'll ask you to unmute or you can write it in the chat. One question, yeah. while you came back and you had this vision of starting Youth for Seva, uh, how did you approach this and what are the major challenges you faced uh, in order to achieve the... Uh, in fact, when I wanted to do something, I just wanted to explore first because for 14 years I was away. So I was not uh, really sure of the ground realities here, that what is a real need and what works. So I started more as an exploration for myself. In fact, uh, Youth for Seva was not registered as an organization for five years. It was just an experiment. Even though we started in Hyderabad, we started in Bhopal, Chennai, never registered as an organization. And that we just created it as a movement, as a platform. And later on, because of the legal compliances, we had to register. But what I believed is that it is not that you have to have perfect clarity about what you want to do. Always be open to learning and get into the water to learn swimming. You, you can't have you know, full clarity about your mission, exactly the program details. And many times people who think that they will do you know, thorough homework and start, they actually bind themselves. They're not very open to new ideas. In my case, I was... Uh, aware that I have, not, I have not lived here for 14 years and now many things have changed. So I was always eager to learn from different organizations and different people in this sector and kept on experimenting. I think even now that is going on. I think it's a constant learning experience and the more and more we experiment, more we learn. So don't wait for a perfect idea. So can you tell us about one or two challenges, which were yeah. major challenges and how did you tackle them? Actually, initially, when I was talking to people, many people discouraged this idea, telling that you know, the young people are not interested in this, they're busy with their studies, or they're after making money. That was the kind of comments I heard, except from Professor Vaidyanathan at IIM Kanto. He was the only person who said, you, are, you have the right idea at the right time, he said. But when we actually started the work, this part became very easy, getting volunteers. But our challenge was engagement. Because when we approached the government hospitals, there was no system to engage volunteers. Because in US, as I mentioned, every public hospital has a volunteer manager. Every library has a volunteer manager. Here, there was no one to give the work. That was the situation even in schools. They were suspicious. Why are you coming to school? We have teachers here. They were thinking that you know, we were going to supervise them or complain about them. So building that trust with the government system was the biggest challenge in 2007. I think uh, after three, four years, they saw the value, what volunteers can bring to the system. And today, uh, the schools are coming to us, you know, send your volunteers to our school. And uh, our volunteers are training the government school teachers today. So I think this acceptance has come, but in hospitals, there is still resistance. Because we have tried in different government hospitals, there is resistance to engage volunteers for various reasons. I would not like to get into that. But I think the system has to change. That was the biggest challenge, I would say. The second challenge was the volunteer retention. When the school requests that we need four volunteers, initially we used to assign four volunteers, but two would drop out. 
that's the very nature of volunteering because they also don't know when they get into what is the nature of work or there is a change in their you know life they have got moved to some other job moved to some other town so now we learn to plan the backup in the sense if the school needs four volunteers we assign six volunteers those were the learnings because volunteer retention is a challenge and later on we figured out what does it take to keep the volunteers motivated so we started doing various enrichment programs for the volunteers and even get togethers for volunteers because everyone wants a good friend circle so i think you know that's what uh, keeps people motivated it's not just the philosophy or ideology an enjoyable group to work with i think those are some of the challenges and what we have learned so one more thing being uh, we being at educational institutions we think that if we can contribute to society in uh, in the area of education and uh, related to that then uh, one many i hear many friends also saying that we can do this but they don't see any any opportunity or any platform to do that so one of the initiative i have seen is that laboratory on a vehicle kind of initiative i have also seen so it is a very novel idea and uh, so uh, how did you uh, uh, how did you got this idea and what are the uh, other aspects of education which we as a students can tackle Now, see, lab on wheels. Uh, again, all our ideas came from the needs that we have sensed. After getting into the field, uh, we have to have you know good ears. We have to listen to the community, and based on what we heard, we started the programs. Now, lab on wheels is one such thing. Mobile science lab. That again requires some investment. But the large scale volunteer engagement that we are doing is to coach the children in government schools for the scholarship exams that government provides scholarship. because there is a scholarship called national means come merit scholarship for eighth standard students if they clear that they get 12000 rupees a year but there is a you know mental ability test there gmat component and they are never trained children go into government school and this is where students like you at iits and all the colleges you can easily coach them in many districts uh, this money is going back to the government because not enough children are qualified so without spending a single paise you can do this and now we are also doing awareness program on the ishram because government brings out many schemes but government has no mechanism to reach the last person unless the volunteers are engaged and you know all this requires some paperwork registration right ishram you have to register them volunteers go and sit with them and register them on the platform so aishman bharat people come for medical help you know when they are admitted to hospital they never taken any insurance so government can announce any number of schemes but if the schemes have to reach the last person it calls for community engagement and i think yfs has listed many such opportunities we provide training also for volunteers and one of the good things is aict which is umbrella body for all the engineering colleges it has mandated activity points now so a lot of engineering colleges are coming to us we want to engage thousand students i think it the scale becomes a problem now today like bangalore has the 1 lakh engineering students 100000 students 50 hours if they have to volunteer it's a large potential a huge potential we have at the same time this engagement cannot be done by ngos we have to alter the government system to absorb the community but in karnataka we are piloting now with three departments women and child development social welfare ministry and primary education we had meetings to come up with a model how can we engage even up to panchayat level otherwise ngos are very urban centric and i think that's the direction i would like to see not really yfs growing into a big organization but how can we bring this dna into the government that is the services of government reach the last person in the society thank you sir sir i have few questions in the chat box yeah i'll read them first question is what was the events that led you to go to us uh, honestly there was no thinking you know as i mentioned when i graduated i had this responsibility that i want to do marriage of my sister i want to buy a home for my parents and all and when i joined tata research development and design center the project we were doing uh, was for a client in us so as part of the project i went to us 
so it was not really like i planned my visit i did not go for higher studies it was uh, through the job that i went to us i would say it, it just happened there was no thinking involved at that time thank you sir so next question is how can we be a volunteer i am based in mumbai so can i get some details about volunteering sure anywhere in the country so you can register on the website youthforseva.org and we will connect with you because uh, in mumbai youth for seva itself does not have direct projects but we have partnered with many organizations like this like in mumbai we have seva sahyog which is very similar to youth for seva and we will connect you to those organizations there is samathol foundation which works with runaway children in the railway platforms so there are many organizations in mumbai that we can connect you to please register on the website and we will take it forward thank you sir so next next comment is from uh, this nalgonda chapter lab on wheels is working experience super ji thank you ji the government school school students very happy thank you okay sir, sir i have a question regarding what are the activities which are happening here in uh, this area uh, I, i think i have seen one of the center is in the lucknow also i guess so what are the major activities happening and how can we if one is interested how can one participate in the uh, up it's not happening in a very large scale because we had started the lucknow chapter just before covid okay sir and we had signed an mou with up government to work with the government schools but the schools got shut down okay. uh, so not much has moved but now that schools are reopening we will get back to the activities again uh, but definitely i would love to you know see a good team from iit uh, kanpur and uh, we have few coordinators ready i think once the school system opens up now and because a lot of our engagement happens in government schools or in the slum areas so in like in noida we are doing a lot of work but in kanpur area we are yet to initiate i think uh, you can help us start the chapter there sure sir so next question is from richard is volunteering better than entrepreneurship in your opinion what is it volunteering is volunteering better than entrepreneurship uh, it's not you know one or the other because even in our team of volunteers there are many entrepreneurs even as an entrepreneur you can uh, volunteer also to coach others you to mentor others if you have built a successful company i always encourage you know entrepreneurship as a first choice whether it is business entrepreneurship or social and so don't think that you know enterprise means only business today there is a huge uh, space for social entrepreneurship also be enterprising i would say whether it is the social space or the you know business space that always is uh, you know, the first thing that i encourage young people to do because when you think of the scale the moment you start your own enterprise and it's not simply to give job for others often people think that enterprise means yeah it's a good thing because it gives job to others not because of that because it solves problems in original ways and on a large scale so in that respect definitely i encourage you know entrepreneurship but you can be an entrepreneur and still volunteer this thing are not in you know, a one or the other thank you sir the next question is from vishwanath without public support ngos gradually lose their enthusiasm how to improve and how to face public challenges without public support yes sir but as i mentioned today the ecosystem is so uh, conducive for ngos because if you are doing good work that you know people appreciate people are willing to join hands so maybe we can discuss separately what are your specific problems if you have tried something and did not get enough public support usually we have seen good amount of public support it's only in the initial stage for example when you walk into a slum there is there is politics in the slums because uh, as an outsider when you go there are always suspicious i think gaining their trust is extremely important so don't rush into activities right away when you go to a village or a slum area spend time with them build the trust level and be a political because then they don't perceive you know, perceive you as a threat why the local leaders suppose anyone coming from outside it, they think that you become another power center you be, if you become popular i think remaining gay political is a very important thing so that you get support from the entire community and you hardly have any resistance so the lack of public support can come from various reasons first they don't know what you are trying to do you are not communicated well 
or they think that you have vested interest that you want to contest election or you want to support some party that may be another reason or it just that you have rushed into activities too early without you know gaining the trust thank you sir so there are no more questions in the chat box but i'll ask you one more thing sir Uh, can you share uh, a few of the stories which has uh, really uh, made an impact made you feel that the progress is really there and usually we hear that the progress of the social work are very less and we rarely see or we see very few stories of very few positive stories so can you tell us about some of the stories which made an impact uh, you know what uh... keeps me motivated in this journey in youth for seva is the success or impact we see at two levels the second part i'll go first for example through the journey of volunteering we have created many change makers you might be aware of uh, shobhit mathur who started vision india foundation and now rashtram university in delhi he was our coordinator in hyderabad started as a volunteer here and the person uh, who built uh, you know a big career guidance program uh, i dream career in delhi aish bansar when he was an engineering student in bangalore he started volunteering and we gave this project of career counseling to him that experience he said triggered him or oh, this is something that now nobody is aware and it motivated him to start a completely new enterprise and there are many instances like that so i think the change agents that volunteering has created youth for seva has created that is a very big motivation for me that it's not just what yfs has done what yfs has done to volunteer so that they in turn have built big organizations so that is one thing second thing is directly on the field also i just narrate one story about the impact of volunteering we were doing a health camp in a government school and there was one girl 9 year old girl who was labeled as deaf and dumb that she could not hear or she could uh, speak and her parents are migrant laborers who are doing construction work our volunteer uh, she asked the you know school teachers have you ever got this girl tested properly they said we don't know we have to check with parents so the volunteer went to their home and asked the parents they said no we did not do anything by birth she is like that they had accepted so this volunteer took the effort to take this girl to a hearing specialist and the specialist confirmed that she has hearing problem probably because of that she is not able to speak so and that the specialist recommended a hearing aid and when the when this girl got the hearing aid she was literally jumping with joy because she could hear after 9 years first time in her life she was hearing sound and this cost at 25000 rupees we did not spend a single paise there was a government scheme in karnataka called suvarna aarogya yojana the volunteer did the paperwork and got the entire money and now after one year of speech therapy she is able to speak also now there are many stories like this you know that impact or a girl who is going through abuse at home when we do menstrual hygiene awareness session and the abuse awareness they open up and we have been able to help them so as i mentioned many of these government schemes without volunteers help it will not see the last person so these are some of the instances that really keep us motivated also thank you sir sir we have one more question in the chat box i have a question what can be done to help and support children who became orphan during covid pandemic see during covid pandemic uh, there are two kinds of children that we come in this category children who lost one parent in many cases it's the breadwinner right children who lost one parent in the family is one category actually children who lost both the parents are very few like due to, due to covid but some of them had only one parent and that one parent also they lost during covid so children who became completely orphan is one children who lost one parent is one category for children who lost both the parents government has announced a very good support program all their education will be taken care by the government even if the relatives are taking care of them government provides uh, you know uh, money for them to take care of the children 
they are also putting some fixed deposit for them so when they turn 18 or 20 they get that money but unfortunately children who lost one parent not much is being done. that was left to the state governments some states have done few things and some states haven't done at youth for seva you know we have announced a scholarship program uh, called alamban for such children who have lost one parent which to you know for which the government is not supporting we are taking care of their education completely and youth for seva in partnership with seva international like seva international takes care of all the children up to 10th standard and yfs has taken all the children from 11th onwards so we have taken more than a you know, more than 1500 children together and this is one support system we have been able to provide and many orphanages have come forward to take these children so i think that's the support system that uh, together with the government and ngos we have been able to provide and as the yfs is not the only ngo there are few others who are providing scholarships also thank you on behalf of vivekananda samiti for taking your precious time to join here and sharing valuable thoughts i thank you all for attending this lecture om shanti 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 hi hari om tat sat